The year is 1850. Imagine you're rushing to board a train in a freezing Russian winter. Just as you climb onto the train, as it's slowly moving off, one of your gloves falls off your hand and onto the tracks under the train. You've got to get to Poland for an important meeting and you need to catch this train. But to travel hundreds of miles in an unheated train in the middle of a winter like this with just one glove is no joke. What do you do? Miss the train and get the glove or miss the glove and get the train? Well, I'll tell you what Rabbi Yisrael Salanta did. He took off his other glove and threw it under the train so that the person who found the gloves would at least have something useful. From where does a sensitivity like that come? At first glance, Judaism seems like an ocean of do's and don'ts. Don't do this, do this, do this now, but don't do it tomorrow. Don't go in here if you're a Kohen, a priest, but you can go in there if you're Yisrael. You can eat bread today, but you can't eat it tomorrow. The New Testament canard of the nitpicking Pharisaic Old Testament has been a familiar anti-Semitic slur down the centuries. But why does Judaism have to be so nitpicking? The sensitivity of a Rabbi Yisrael Salanta comes from all that nitpicking. Torah is the wisdom of precision. Every movement, every feeling, every thought must be weighed and evaluated and checked to see whether it's perfect. The power of Torah lies precisely in its laser-like attention to differences of a hair's breadth. When a person trains himself to recognize hair's breadth differences in the physical world, the hair's breadth difference between a Sefer Torah that's kosher and one that's pasul, unfit, between an, an idea that's logically consistent and one that's distorted, he creates within himself a sensitivity to recognize the subtle flaws in his own character. The sensitivity and character refinement of our great Torah sages comes from the wisdom of precision, from the wisdom of our holy Torah.